When it comes to most electronic devices, there's an unsung hero that literally carries all of them and we often don't even think about it their feet. Now, for most companies, it's an afterthought. They just order them on AliExpress, stick them on the bottom of their devices and call it done. But not us. As you might have noticed by now, we like a good challenge, so we decided to hell with it. We're just gonna make our own machine and manufacture our own feet. For our devices, I mean. Meet the Injectinator. Now, I'd love to tell you that I'll leave the link in the description, but the Injectinator is a one-off device, both developed and manufactured in-house. Not by me, mind you, but by my friend and business partner, who's also the owner of the CNC shop we're currently in. He's a bit camera shy, so he's asked me if I could show it to you. A while ago, I posted a video in which we showcased his custom computer frame called System 8. For that, I do have a link in the description, by the way. What we left out in that video was the fact that the aluminum legs that hold the frame in the upright position didn't have any feet because, well, we didn't have any at the time. But now we do, so let's look at how they're made. But before we get to the actual process, let's first look at the Injectinator, which in a nutshell is an injection molding machine, hence the name. Let's start at the top with the pneumatic cylinder and its piston rod. It's driven completely by compressed air, which is why there are no cables going in or out of it. It only takes these two hoses connected to solenoid valves on the other end to control the movement of the piston. Below the piston, there's a special funnel into which, for the time being, and we'll come to the reason why shortly, we have to manually pour the raw material, in our case an elastomere designated TPE-60A. It feels like small pieces of rubber, but it's actually plastic. In case you ever wondered, this is how it's usually shipped in its raw form. Small pellets, also known as granules or nurdles. I like that word, nurdles. But it's what's below the funnel that's much more interesting. A hollow cylinder that performs several very different but equally important functions. First, it needs to melt the plastic and keep it in liquid state, which is why it has a resistive heating collar around it. Despite the complicated name, the principle here is actually very easy. As the current passes through the heating elements inside, well, it heats them up in exactly the same way as your toaster does, for example. As you can see, the color has two wires attached to it, one obviously to deliver the current, and the second being connected to a thermocouple that reports the temperature back to the microcontroller, which we'll get to shortly. I hope that makes the second function of the cylinder clear. It's used as a temporary storage for the molten plastic. It's a cup of sorts. And now we come to the part that will likely look very familiar if you have any experience with 3D printing the nozzle. It's made in-house from brass and there's a very concrete reason as to why it's shaped this way. You see, when plastic or any other material for that matter passes through another, it's important that heat is transferred from one to the other, in our case brass to plastic, as uniformly as possible. Failure to do so can and often does result in bending, warping or uneven shrinkage of the end product, which pretty much makes it a waste. Now, luckily for us, the material we're using can be chopped up back into small pieces and reused, but if the yields are low, that still means a lot of time wasted. And time, as the saying goes, is money. And now we get to the final part, the mold. As it currently stands, no pun intended, the feet are manufactured with this unfinished mold as we're still experimenting with the three most important characteristics. The sprue width, air ducts width and quantity, and the number of cavities. The sprue is called the part of the mold through which the molten material, in our case plastic, comes into the mold. We either break or cut it away once the two halves of the molds are separated to extract the feet from it. Air ducts serve sort of an inverse purpose to the sprue. They allow the air to escape while the mold is being filled with plastic through the sprue. Their number, position and width are also very important because they allow the plastic to fill out the mold evenly so that the final product doesn't have defects we mentioned earlier. And finally, the number of cavities means how many copies of the same product are made with one injection or shot as they're called. The limits here are mostly physical in nature. We need to determine how much plastic each shot can deliver. And that's mostly dictated by the pressure, travel distance and the width of the piston. For our feet and while we're in the prototyping phase, we determined two per shot will be just right. Okay, now that you have learned all there is about injection molding, I'm kidding by the way, let's have a look at how this machine works. 
Obviously, we first need to pour as much of the raw material into the funnel as we can. In our case, it's about 20 shots worth. Then we assemble the two halves of the mold, put it under the nozzle and finally press the button to push the piston down through the funnel, which in turn pushes a sufficient amount of plastic through the nozzle and into the mold. We hold this button down for a couple of seconds so that the plastic in the mold has sufficient time to properly cool down and solidify before we take the mold apart and take the feet plus the sprue out. The keen-eyed among you have probably noticed that a couple of steps in this project feel a bit janky, with cables dangling around and whatnot, and that's because they are. There are three main components still missing that will make this process much more precise, repeatable and automated. First, it doesn't yet have a microcontroller or the brain of the machine, if you will. One that will allow us to set the timer for how long the piston should stay in down position, for example, how long each cycle should take and what the cylinder pressure should be. Second, it needs a doser, which is basically a cup with a small latch that will open every pre-programmed couple of cycles in order to pour more raw material into our funnel. And finally, we need some kind of vise that will automate the separation of two halves of the mold and push whatever we're producing out. If you want to see an update when all the pieces are in place, let me know in the comments below and we'll make another video then. The last thing I have yet to show you is the second mold we already made. You see, the legs of the System 8 frame have two different mounting positions and we thought the empty one doesn't look as good when not in use, so we made a mold for the small covers. We're not quite happy with how they turned out but luckily we have a machine that can make us new molds in a matter of hours before we wrap this up if you'd like to see a much bigger version of an injection molding machine one that manufactures aluminum parts let me know and i'll show you around an aluminum foundry one owned by my sister tomas from slovenia signing out